All right, picture this. You're scrolling through your feed, double tapping some insane landscape shot or a perfectly lit street portrait. You pause for a second and think, how do we even get here? Like how did photography go from this niche technical art form to something so accessible that your phone can now outshoot half the cameras from like 20 years ago? That's what we're diving into today. The four cameras that straight up changed photography forever. Not just in specs or popularity, but in impact. The way they shifted culture, redefined creativity, and made the craft essentially what it is today. But here's the twist. I'm not just gonna list cameras. This isn't just gonna be some gearhead countdown. We're talking real influence legacy and controversy so a lot more discussion based and thought provoking and maybe just maybe by the end of this you'll rethink what it means for a camera to matter so grab your favorite lens cap because this one's definitely gonna spark some debate so part one and this is pretty much the one where it all started the kodak brownie from 1900 so let's rewind way back early to the 1900s before megapixels before autofocus before anyone was even saying exposure triangle the kodak brownie dropped in 1900 and it wasn't the best camera ever made quite far from it honestly speaking but it was the first camera that said hey anyone could do this and it sold for like a dollar and it was literally cardboard and a simple lens but it made photography personal before that taking a photo was this elite scientific process you needed chemicals glass plates and a serious wallet the brownie pretty much rejected all of that that was the first time people started capturing their own lives, their pets, birthdays, vacations. And honestly, that's pretty wild because that's literally what all of Instagram culture is right now. The brownie wasn't about image quality. It was about democratizing storytelling. And that's pretty much gonna be the theme of this video as you'll see throughout. How each of these cameras didn't just change photography, they changed who really got to photograph. So continuing on, part two, which would be the Leica One or the game changer, many people would say. So fast forward 25 years. So now we're in 1925. Leica One hits the scene. If the Brownie made photography accessible, the Leica made it cool. The Leica was the first camera to take 35 millimeter film, the same film that we still use today, by the way, and made it portable. Suddenly photographers didn't have to carry a tripod or a giant box on their back. You could walk, shoot, move all simultaneously. Street photography, born right there. Henry Cartier-Bresson, a name I've mentioned on this channel plenty of times. The decisive moment, just all Leica. Leica was sleek, it was discreet, and it was mechanical perfection, honestly speaking. It took photography out of the studio and really put it on the streets. So here's a hot take I have, and maybe not so hot depending on who you are and where you stand, but without the Leica, there's really no photojournalism as we know it. No humans of New York, no raw, no candid emotion on the streets of Tokyo, Paris, or wherever you may be. The Leica made the moment matter more than the setup. That's something modern photographers sometimes forget, and I also speak about that a lot on this channel as well. We get lost in our megapixels and dynamic range charts, but the Leica era was about timing and a lot about true storytelling and soul within the images that the people were viewing. And here's also something to think about. Photography today is often seen as a little too perfect. But while we're at it, let me ask you something directly. And I want you to leave your answer in the comment section down below because I would love to know where you stand on this. Would you rather have a technically perfect photo or an emotionally perfect one? Because that's kind of the heart of this whole discussion. Drop your take in the comment sections because I would love to hear what you have to say. And if you're enjoying this video so far, feel free to leave a like. That helps me out a great deal and it shows that you're interested in this content and we'll push it out to more people who might also be interested. And subscribe because 91% of you that watch aren't subscribed. Um, we do all types of just different photography related thought provoking pieces so if you just like to discuss or even just listen to things or takes about photography in general this is the place to be so drop subscribe that would help me out a great deal and i would really appreciate it and because we're just trying to continue to grow and do big things so i would much appreciate it and let's get straight back into it so part four and now we have the iphone from 2007 the true disruptor i would say and this is where people are either going to be nodding their heads or clicking away but stick with me on this i promise you this one's going to be good so the iphone yeah the phone camera love it or hate it it definitely changed photography more than probably any other device on this list and 
as much as I'm a photographer and love my cameras, it hurts to admit it, but it's the truth. And I mean, once you can accept it, it doesn't hurt as much. Love it or hate it, it changed photography a lot. And because the iPhone, it didn't just make it easy to take photos, it made it impossible not to. The iPhone put a camera in everyone's pocket, connected it to the internet and said, okay, now show the world what you see. And that shift from capturing moments to sharing moments changed everything about how we experienced images. You've got apps like Instagram, Visco, Snapseed, Vero even. They turned editing into a part of daily life. Suddenly, color grading wasn't just for pros, it was a swipe away. And sure, purists will say, you know, phone camera killed real photography. But I mean, honestly speaking, just for the sake of the argument, I would say that they technically evolved it as well. Think about it. We're living in a time where an 18 year old with a phone can outshoot a commercial campaign from 2005. You have mobile editing apps pushing creative boundaries faster than half the camera companies can even catch up with. The iPhone is pretty controversial, yes, but it's also the reason millions of people discovered the joy of capturing the light. And I feel like that honestly is what matters most. Part four, the Canon EOS 5D Mark II, 2008. And this is kind of the revolution, let's just call it that. That's gonna be the title of this part. So we're gonna jump ahead a few decades to the camera that really changed everything about how we shoot today. The Canon 5D Mark II. In 2008, Canon drops this full frame DSLR camera that can shoot video as well. It's pretty much game over because before that, photo and video were completely separate worlds. You were either a photographer or you were a filmmaker. Then this camera drops and suddenly every photographer could also film cinematic video. YouTube filmmakers, indie filmmakers, music video makers, DSLR cinematography was all born here. If you've ever seen a wedding reel highlight from like 2010 to 2015, it was probably shot on a 5D Mark II. It redefined content creation before that phrase really even existed. This was the first time that art, technology, and the internet collided all in one camera body. And you can still feel that DNA today. Every hybrid mirrorless camera, for example. Every creator who shoots both photo and video, every cinematic vlog, all of that traces back to the 5D Mark II. It blurred the lines between creator and cinematographer, which is pretty interesting. So for this one, I'm not gonna lie, I have another hot take. So this one is that that camera didn't just democratize filmmaking, the 5D Mark II. It didn't just democratize filmmaking. It really killed the Hollywood monopoly on storytelling because when this camera really hit the market, anyone could tell their story and they could really make it look cinematic. That was a true game changer in my opinion. So where does this all take us to or what makes a camera really change photography? So the Kodak Brownie made photography accessible. The Leica made it mobile. The 5D Mark II made it cinematic and the iPhone made it universal. Each of those moments didn't just redefine the gear. They redefined who could tell a story and that's the real through line here. Every major leap in camera history has been about tearing down barriers between people and their creativity. And if you ask me, the next big shift won't be about megapixels or AI noise reduction. It'll be about connection, like it always is. How we use these tools to tell more human stories, not just technically perfect ones. Because when you strip away all the specs, all the marketing, it's all about that same feeling the brownie gave people in 1900. I can capture this moment and I can keep it forever. That's the true power of photography. That's what these four cameras gave us. And maybe that's what'll just keep pushing us forward. Not the next camera drop, but the story we choose to tell. So closing thoughts. Is there a fifth camera that you think should be on this list? Let me know in the comment section down below. If you made it to this point in the video, these this is the bonus section. So what camera, and it could even be the one that you personally use. I would definitely, I don't know what I would recommend. I'm not even gonna go there, but maybe if you drop your comment, I might drop mine. So let me know what you have to say about that. And if you stuck around this long, honestly, I really do appreciate you. You're definitely a real one. And if you aren't subscribed, subscribe. That means we definitely was vibing out for a good little minute. So if you want more interesting stuff like this, this is definitely the place to be. So I would much appreciate it. And I would love to grow and have you alongside me. So. I'll catch you all in the next one. I ain't going to keep rambling too much. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Peace.